I wouldn't normally not recommend playing a game if you're in a particular place, but there are definitely certain parts of the world where you wouldn't want to shake that city. Hey there everyone, I'm Kylie, coming at you from Inside Games Unlimited. This week, we want to shake that city. So, nothing shaking in the box. Pro tip, I actually take everything out of the box so it doesn't rattle around when I'm doing these videos. But what does shake is this cool little thing here. Cool little thing here. Cool little thing here. So this is the shake in Shake That City. What is Shake That City? Well, it's a city builder. You have a six by six grid that you're gonna be placing different parts of the city on, residential areas, industrial areas, commercial areas, etc. Uh, a lot of sort of thematic things we've seen before. Uh, but the way you're gonna be placing them is very interesting because every round, you're gonna shake up this cool little box and then if you're familiar with something like Camel Up, had a cool little pyramid device that dropped dice, this, when you press the thing down and release it, you're going to get a set of nine cubes. So this is going to be a three by three grid of cubes, and the cubes come in the different colors that represent the parts of the city, the residential, the commercial. Residential's red, industrial's black, various things like that. Um, but the device itself is going to make this three by three grid of random cubes and that's important because you're going to choose a color which color what type of uh part of your city do you want to put in your city this round and you get to place that on your six by six grid but you have to use the exact pattern that you see here on that was made by those cubes okay so this would be something that would be very difficult to do with cards right because you need complete randomness of what's going to come out. Maybe you're going to get a huge section of red. Pro tip, huge section of red is actually not good. Red are the residential areas, and they're worth two points a piece for each residential area or for each grouping of it. So you actually want your residential, you want your houses far apart from each other. So if the cube thing makes a big grouping of red, that's probably not something you want to take. There's, of course, different distribution of cubes in this little shaky thing. Uh, roads being the least common and roads being one of the most important things because I'm not going to get into scoring too deep, but there's commercial buildings which score one, two, or three points depending on how close they are to the heart of the city. They're worth more points in the middle, but they only score points if you can connect them by roads out to the edge. So you're taking a little bit of risk there if you put some commercial buildings in the middle, uh, hoping to get some roads. And like I said, since there's only, this little cheat sheet here says, there's only five cubes total, road, road cubes total in there. So at most five roads are gonna show up in one go. And a lot of times you might not even have any roads. So every round, you're gonna put all the cubes back in there. You're gonna shake, 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 shake it up. You're gonna reveal what the pattern is this time. And the star player, the person who actually shook the cubes, gets to choose which color they want. Everybody else gets to choose whatever color they want, but they cannot choose the color that the start player. So it's one of these games that has, uh, you know, it, in theory, everyone could do the exact same thing, but in practice, no, because you can't do what the start player did. Uh, also, there's some bonuses on your little map. At the beginning of every game, you randomly put out these bonuses along the edge that if you can complete this goal, you'll get to turn it over for three points. So like the corner goal is just have two of every building, every building type in your city. There's five different types. Uh, but then there's things like, oh, if you can place four commercial in this one particular row, you can turn it over. Or if you can just fill a complete row, you can turn it over. So those are going to be randomized, but everybody places them in the exact same order and the exact same orientation. Because one of the things about this pattern that I didn't mention, you're not allowed to rotate it. You have to place the cubes exactly how it shows here. So in this particular setup, uh, there I've got two greens, a green uh, on the, the corners. So basically, if I were to place green, which are the parks, I could place one, and then I have to place the other one two spaces south of it say or two, two spaces down from it. I can't rotate it and do them east-west. I have to do them north-south. Uh, obviously as the game goes on you might not actually be able to place the thing you want to place and that's too bad. You have to place something. If something's placeable not everything's good right. So factories are going to make your if you put them next to residential areas makes your residential areas worth no points so you got to be careful. Uh, really cool game. You know I love when you get something cool like this little shaky thing but it's not just a gimmick. You know it's one of these things when I first played the game I said yeah you could not do this uh, not easily you'd probably have to have a huge stack of cards with all the random and even then I don't think it would be possible to to come up with the cool random variation of this cube shaking thing so that is shake that city uh, plays one to four there's a solo mode uh, the other side of each board actually has a beach area so slightly different rules there uh, but it's a quick game 30 minutes you can play it with the whole family super easy to teach I like Shake That City. Come on down to Games Unlimited, check it out, maybe even take a copy home, and unbox some fun.